Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Good morning, and I hope you guys are doing well. So I'm back with another podcast, and I wanted to talk about you know how I feel about all the things that are going on on YouTube because people send me requests about this stuff all the time because I am a you know YouTuber at the end of the day. And I truly feel like there are two YouTubes. I really do. I feel like there's a elitist YouTube for a lot of like the big white influencers and then there's everybody else. Now, if you guys have not heard, James Charles, the one that's been accused of sexual allegations towards minors several times, okay, not once, but there's been at least eight minors that have come out against him. Now, he tried to speak about it. He did a video that was very low quality. The audio was real soft, and he claimed he was taking personal responsibility. But even with all that, people weren't buying it, and Morphe ended up dropping him. So Morphe, they had released a statement, and Morphe was one of his biggest, you know, champions, honey. And so they ended up dropping him, and this is what Morphe says. They said, in light of the recent allegations against James Charles, Morphe and James have agreed to end their business relationship and wind down sales of the Morphe X James James Charles product offering. It is and has always been Morphe's goal to create a positive, safe, and empowering space where all beauty lovers can freely share their, their artistry and passion for cosmetics, and Morphe is committed to furthering that goal. So that is what Morphe said on April 16th. And then James also released a statement as well. So James says, accountability is something that I have spoken about a number of times in the past. In my most recent video, I spoke about and took accountability for my part in conversations I had with a few individuals who told me they were over the age of 18, as I said in that video. I can't show change overnight, but will over time. Since posting that video, many people have come forward with a series of misleading stories and false allegations, which have been reported on by many people, creators, and news outlets. My legal team has begun taking action against those that spread misinformation or created completely false stories, as this has gone too far. These stories have caused many of my long-term partners to receive considerable negative feedback, and one of them being Morphe. I've loved every moment working with them, and I am beyond grateful for what we have created together. That being said, I have reached out to them, and we mutually agreed to wind down our James Charles X Morphe collaboration, which is my only project with them. I am continuing to take time away to learn, grow, listen, and look forward to coming back one day in the future as a better version of myself, James. So that is what James Charles had to say. And I'm sorry if you guys are hearing beeping. You guys know they're doing construction. They're building new homes every five minutes in my neighborhood. So I apologize for that. So now that was on the 16th. James is talking about suing people, you know, who posted misleading things, who added extra sauce to the story and stuff like that. But again, James, you wouldn't even be in this situation had you not been trolling for teen peen. So again, take personal responsibility for every action, there's a reaction. There'd be nobody putting falsehoods and, you know, extra sauce to a story had you not been caught several times doing the same actions that you claimed that you would not be doing way back when Tati Westbrook ended up blasting you. So let's keep that real. So now it's been announced as of Monday that YouTube, um, they temporarily, remember this word, temporarily, demonetize his YouTube channel, meaning that he won't be able to make any money from any videos on that site. So even his past videos, everything's demonetized and demonetization is like it's like a punch in the gut <laughs> i've been there um they demonetized my entire news channel for no reason um you know a lot of black creators have been there so you know that's a lot of money lost for him because he has over 26 million subscribers on youtube he has 27 million on instagram i mean he has a huge social media platform and it was all built on lies but that's a whole nother damn podcast okay so they've demonetized him, plus Morphe has dropped him. That is a lot of money just down the drain. So I'm sure he just probably feels sick right now. He's probably very upset. But again, for there has to be consequences when people do things like this. But one thing I noticed that when it comes to white creators, they get temporarily demonetized. Shane Dawson, he was temporarily demonetized. 
If you guys don't know, it came out that David Dobrik, his channel was also demonetized. They suspended ads from his channel, and this happened on March 26. So how long these demonetizations go on, I'm not really sure. Some people say they usually last about six months. That's usually when, and these, now let's, don't get it twisted. These guys are rich. James Charles is worth like $12 million. So even if he never makes another dime from Morphe and YouTube, I think he's great, okay? He had, he's built his generational wealth. David Dobrik is worth millions of dollars. So even when they demonetize these channels, it's not really a punishment. They usually leave for six months. They go get supposed counseling. They sit on the beaches of Malibu. They sip their champagne. They still hang with their influencer friends on the low. You know, you can't post pictures with them because then you'll get back lash but you can still come to my mansion and kick it with me on the low so they're still living their best life they're still worth money you know they're, they they have savings so they're gonna be okay and um then they come back six months later after you know said hiatus of counseling and you know relaxation and a way for the the drama to die down then they come back and they pick up like business as usual shane dawson did the same thing and Shane Dawson is worth millions. He made so much money with that Jeffree Star collaboration. So he, you know, stayed gone for six months and then he crept back and now he's back making videos. Obviously, he's making videos because he's now remonetized and getting paid. No one is going to work for free. You know, like, I don't know why people still think that this is like the YouTube of yesteryear. Nobody's making videos for free. Okay. If you're not able to be compensated for your time, your editing, and whatever else you're doing, you're not going to do it. You know, maybe when you're first getting started and you're hoping to get into the monetization program but once you've been paid and that is how you make your money you're not going to make free content so they usually come back once their channels are quietly remonetized now the reason why that bothers me is that there's so many black content creators that they didn't even have the option of being temporarily demonetized their entire channels were boop deleted delete all that shit delete all that just straight up gone. You go to look up their channel, can't find them. On top of that, we deal with shadow banning. How many times have people not been notified when I'm live? When I, you know, post a video, they're not getting notifications. You literally have to follow me on other social media platforms like Discord and Patreon or Twitter to get my notifications because YouTube doesn't send them out. Do you know they suppress the channels? I've been sitting at like 900 something thousand for like the past two months, you know? So they push who they want to push through the algorithm. And it's very funny that YouTubers like myself and others like Dollface and, you know, who's one of my good YouTube friends, you know, we follow the rules. You know, we do what we're supposed to do. We're not out here making extreme content. We're not out here harassing and bullying people. We're not out here doxing people. We're not out here doing, you know, nefarious shit. But yet and still... We don't get pushed through the algorithm. We don't get spotlighted. But it's the ones who are, you know, involved in all types of BS that YouTube loves to push. Now, if you guys do not know, um, right now, David Dorbrook is trending all over Twitter and they are dragging him. So what happened is this. Basically, his uh, partner from the vlog squad, Jeff Wittick, he released a two-part docuseries and He's basically letting everybody know the truth about what happened to his face. If you guys don't know, it was close to a year ago when quarantine first happened. This man was seriously hurt because he decided to take part in one of David Dorbrick's, um, you know, harebrained schemes where David Dorbrick was going to basically drive an excavator with one hand while filming with his camera. And this excavator was going to be, you know, a rope was going to be tied to there and his friend would be swinging from that rope. And this psychopath, like I've said before, I get psychopathic tease from David Dorbrick. There's nothing genuine about him. He's a very creepy individual. You can tell if he didn't have YouTube, he'd probably just be some bum somewhere with no goals and aspirations. I just, I don't get anything from him that, that resembles smart, <laughs> articulate, well thought out. He's just one of those frat party white boys. That's the vibe I get from Dorbrick, right? So... His friends are hanging from this rope and he's swinging them wildly. Then he proceeds to stop and the dude basically goes, I don't know how many miles per hour. He hits this lake and his whole face shatters. He damn near loses his eye. I want you guys to go ahead and watch the video snippet really quick. Check this out. 
Corinna gets on it and then David starts moving it. It's like, this shot looks so sick. This looks beautiful. She's good, she's good. The thing comes off and it starts falling down and Corinna's like, oh, what the fuck? Put me down, put me down. She's like, you take things too far, David. I just jumped out of a plane 20 times. What's the worst that could happen if I swing from a rope over a one foot deep lake? And yeah, I didn't know I was gonna go that fast. But this is where I made a mistake. I forgot that the biggest fucking idiot I know was driving it. Oh shit, oh shit. All right, so you guys just saw that video. Now, what's funny is that Trish Paytas back in 2019, you know, I'm going to start calling her Trish Adamas in a minute. Well, not really. But back in 2019, she had stated that something bad was going to happen to this group because they were pushing it further and further and further. Y'all go ahead and try what Trish had to say. It's going to give me so much hate because everyone's up his butt, but they're going to realize and something bad is going to happen in that group. I don't know what it is. Something bad, something dangerous, something like, like they do all these dangerous things. Someone's going to either die or like also. All right. So you guys just saw what Trish had to say about the situation. And I remember when she was saying all this stuff, when she was blasting them, because again, she's another one with low self-esteem who wanted to fit in. She wanted to fit in with this crew, started, you know, dating and smashing one of the vlog squad members. And they ended up basically treating her like trash, recording their sex sessions. They put her through hell just to make vlogs. And so what she was saying was the truth, but a lot of people ignored it because of the messenger. And now a lot of this stuff is coming to pass. I don't understand how YouTube continues to push these types of people, this type of content. We had it with the Logan and the Jake Pauls where they were burning up pools and, you know, just doing all types of stuff, destroying homes and, you know, but because they're making so much money from YouTube, it didn't matter. They could just fix the hole in the wall. They could just, you know, fix the pool and everything else. And it's like they reward bad behavior on this site. And I, for one, I'm sick of it. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.